Okay, this talk is who is the Copernicus of Cancer and why? So this is a beautiful painting of Copernicus, the astronomer, the Catholic uh, deacon um, from Poland. It was painted by Jan Mateko, and he's a Polish artist. Um, it's a rather spectacular painting, and he also calls it a conversation with God. And that's an important point. Science came out of the Catholic Church, and that's, that's a fact. What we consider modern science was er experimentation, theory, and whatnot empirical research that came out of the Catholic Church and very religious people like Copernicus, uh, Kepler, and Newton. And we're going to explain in just a moment how this relates to cancer causation and how that can help people who have cancer in a big way. Okay, so just a couple quick quotes by Copernicus and Kepler because I, I, I do find this funny because the Enlightenment tried to steal credit for science uh, and give it and say atheism ran science and that's a joke. Look at atheistic countries. They stink at science. Look at China. Okay, it's a big crap hole. Look at Russia. It's a big crap hole. Okay, atheist communist countries. They suck. Okay, and I, I make that point because I see there's a tendency in, in this country for completely separating science and religion and that's largely so that science can be used to hurt people rather than help people and that's an important observation and if, if it and so anyways, what we were, we're not going to talk too much more about that. A couple quick quotes and then we'll get into the, the cancer causation and why it's all relevant. So Copernicus, the universe was made for us by a supremely good and orderly creator to know the mighty works of God, to comprehend his wisdom and majesty, to appreciate in degree the wonderful workings of his methods. Surely this must be a pleasing mode of worship to the most high. Nicholas Copernicus. Okay. Uh, now here's uh, Kepler. Kepler refined uh, Copernican heliocentric theory by figuring out that planetary orbits were um, primarily elliptical rather than circular and thus removing the need for ad hoc epicycles to be invented to try to make sense of it all. So here's the quotes by Kepler. For many years I wanted to be a theologian, but now I see how God is praised by my work in astronomy. Science is the process of thinking God's thoughts after him. The chief aim of studying the external world is to discover the rational order and harmony imposed on it by God, which he reveals to us, is in the language of mathematics. The wisdom of the Lord is infinite. The heavens declare the glory of God. Johannes Kepler. Okay. And so we talked about that. Okay. One more quote by Kepler. And I, I love this quote. He said, it does not matter if my book finds its reader in a hundred or even a thousand years. Has not God himself waited 6,000 years for a human mind to be capable of gazing on his celestial spheres with understanding? Johannes Kepler from the Harmony of the World. So the point is, they did this because they were interested in it, to understand God's creation. And science of that type tends to lead to good things that can potentially really help people a lot versus the atheistic science that humans are just talking primates often looks for ways to exploit them. And you'll, you'll say, oh, what am I talking about? Look at the modern universities, okay? It's been known by people who know how to read a scientific paper since the 1920s that diabetes was caused by high-fat diets. But still, modern diabetes experts trained by universities, they don't even know that, okay? All right, now let's get to cancer, what this whole talk is really about. The traditional teaching on cancer causation has been the somatic mutation theory, SMT. SMT does not work well. It's led to lots of so-called epicycle-like ad hoc explanations where they try to say, well, because of this, 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 and this. And it assumes that cancer is caused by mutation in a single cell, a monoclonal problem, that mutation is the primary causative event, and that it's primarily a problem in cell replication, and that cells don't normally divide much. But the reality is mutations are primarily a secondary phenomenon. And this is an essential insight to making sense. And that's, you know, the Genome Atlas Project helps show that and refute the somatic mutation theory. And there's been other things that help refute that as well. The MTC is the metabolic theory of cancer. There's lots of people who study cancer their whole life and they never learn the metabolic theory. And they can never understand cancer. And it's all this big mystery and hand-waving. Okay, metabolic theory of cancer is great for understanding lots of things about cancer. And if you're interested in cancer, you know somebody has cancer, this is what they need to know. This is like knowing diabetes is caused, insulin resistance is caused by eating high fat, okay? And there's a lot of stuff been written about the metabolic theory of cancer. It just hasn't widely been 
you know, disseminate it, all right? There's a good book called Tripping Over the Truth by Travis Christofferson. So the book is good in terms of giving you an introduction to the causation and pathophysiology of cancer, but the book has really stupid conclusions. So Travis Christofferson, he does mention Thomas Seafried, who's like this PhD who promotes the keto paleo diet for cancer, which is absolutely stupid. It's beyond stupid. It's moronic when you start reading about the biochemistry of cancer. It's like the stu when I, I would consider it about as stupid as you could be. It's the opposite of correct. So that's what I'm saying. If you want to read Travis Christofferson, if you want to read Seafried or watch their lectures online, fine. It'll help you understand cancer causation. But don't think those guys know what they're talking about for treatment. They're idiots. I, no, I shouldn't say idiots, but they, they have like terrible understanding of nutrition and biochemistry. Stupid. Okay, getting back to metabolic theory of cancer. It posits that metabolic abnormality can cause cancer and can accelerate cancer growth. And like I said, without the metabolic theory of cancer, you could study cancer your whole life and never make sense, hardly any sense of it at all. Um, and who is the Copernicus? The big announcement here. It's Otto Warburg. Otto Warburg, working with tissue cultures, he found that all you have to do is make the tissue cells hypoxic and many of them will die and a few will convert into cancer. Well, they'll de-differentiate and become like an anaerobic bacteria. And instead of normal cells in a multicellular organism like ourselves, they have to work together. If you're a liver cell, you gotta work as a team with the liver to do what liver cells do. If you're in the kidney, you work as a team to do what kidney cells do. When a cancer cell basically is a cell that, hey, I'm not getting enough oxygen, screw this, I'm not playing as part of the team anymore, I'm just out for myself, I'm going to try to grow, and they switch into anaerobic metabolism, and they no longer pay attention to the growth inhibition signals from surrounding cells, and they just proliferate out of control and try to spread somewhere else where they can find more food and oxygen. So understanding that, that cancer is very much like a de-differentiated um, bacteria that has become anaerobic, enables you to figure out tons of stuff about cancer and to really help patients a lot. So Otto Warburg is the Copernicus of cancer and it's a big deal because it enables you to understand a tremendously increased amount of cancer as well as treatment options.